Hello, and welcome to my humble house of learning. Today, we're talking about the Ottomans, who are one of the most flexible civs in Season 6 of Age of Empires 4. As such, the Ottomans can play 1TC Feudal, 2TC Feudal, Semi-Fast Castle, Fast Imperial, even Fast Castle and Dark Age Aggression. They can all in in Feudal, in Castle, or in Imperial, because they scale incredibly well on the back of their military schools. These produce military units for free, which synergizes perfectly with their Imperial Council Vizier points. And these allow for very flexible choices and great buffs to their economy. Today we will focus on these two mechanics and on building the most efficient base to achieve the most flexible opening possible for the Ottomans. So here we are in game, and right from the start we have many ways of playing the Ottoman Dark Age. One possible opening we will not be looking at today is the Dark Age Rush, with an early military school and additional barracks, since it really only gives us one option. If you are interested in that, however, please let me know in the comments below. Here I will showcase the Dark Age opening that seems the most optimized and flexible to me. It is comparatively simple, although not the easiest to execute perfectly, and it is really fast. So. We will start by sending 5 villagers to stone for a single trip and 1 villager, the remaining one goes on sheep. You obviously want to move the sheep closer to the TC and then you send out your scout on a defensive pattern around the middle and then towards your closer side all around so that the scout comes back to your base at around 220. I will get to Y in due time. Now we rally our TC onto sheep and this these sheep are placed in a very specific way. This sheep is moved closest to where we want to build our first military school and this sheep is moved closest to the straggler tree that is nearest to the stone. Now, the, as the stone villagers are returning, we shift them onto the closest straggler tree. And then we use our first villager to build a house right after he dropped off 10 food. And the second villager builds the military school right after they dropped off 10 food. Now, where do we place our military schools? Um, that is a big question. Um, and in my opinion, when building a base as the Ottomans, you want to prioritize efficiency and safety. Um, each of our military schools is worth almost two villagers in Dark Age, almost two and a half villagers in Feudal Age, and up to almost six villagers in Imperial Age with the Istanbul Observatory landmark, of course. And that is one of the main reasons why Ottomans scale so well into the late game. But military schools are also an investment. We had to get the 50 stone earlier, which delays our feudal age, so we need to really protect them. And that is why we want to build them as close to our TC as possible. And we need to place them also around our future blacksmith, which we will build in the feudal age, so that they pay off faster and scale better. So how do we do that most efficiently? Let's take a look. Here you can see our TC in black and the planned layout of our buildings around it. Military schools are labeled MS1 to MS4, military production is labeled M1 to M6, and placed around our blacksmith in green. Landmarks are colored in gold. Um, this is the layout you should have in mind when starting the game. As you can see, our military schools are right next to our TC. Our Castle Age landmark is still close enough to be built in range of TC fire, and our Twin Minaret Madras is placed such that the berries are as close to the TC as possible, given that we still want to be able to place farms all around it later on. We also have space for houses close to our wood line. Now, this is the perfect world scenario. Um, your spawns will not be perfect most of the time, so here are some tips 
to deal with less than perfect spawns. First, you want to look for open space, minimum 11 tiles to 13 tiles if possible for your military production. Then try to avoid placing military production in front of your base. Aim for the sides instead because that is obviously safer. Place your twin minaret madras landmark with berries as close to the TC as possible. Leave space for houses near the woodline if possible. And remember that you can clear forest relatively quickly to gain space. By the way, you could fit more military buildings around your blacksmith in uh, this way, but notice how military schools and farms are placed further away from the TC, and most of the time, once you can produce out of six military production buildings, you are already over 25 minutes in and have reached imperial age, or you can at least afford an additional blacksmith, so it's really not worth the risk, in my opinion. In the case of this example, my base layout will look something like this, because I want to preserve the already chopped straggler tree, which will cause me a few smaller problems later on though, as you will see. So back to executing the plan. I am rallying to sheep from now on. And once the five villagers have delivered the 50 wood, three of them will go onto the nearest already slaughtered sheep, and the other two will build a gold mine down here. As you can see here. It's a good idea to um, control group these villagers so that it goes quicker and easier. Obviously, the villager that built the house and the villager that built the. Um, the military school go back to sheep. You can also shift Q them to not forget. Notice that you may want to place this gold mine um, away from the TC if you need more space. In this case that was not necessary and I also have back gold which is obviously always good. From here things get a little easier. Now we want to rally until we have 13 villagers on food. And remember to gather sheep. At this point you can really take a look at your scout and see um, where the scout is moving and then get all the sheep and not miss any. Um, and then the scout should return at around 220. And this is exactly when the military school will have produced the first spearmen. Um, usually you want, to sc you want to use your scout now to guide the way for the spearmen um, and obviously move the scout to the opponent's base. In this example I will not use the military units that I produce at all, um, but the scout is still on their way to the opponent's base of course, um, with a small detour just to make sure that I haven't missed anything around my base and also to make sure that I know where all the resources around my base are, in case I wanted to expand early. right? So again, typically the spearmen you could use in most matchups to harass gold or the opponent's base in some way. Now we are at 12 villagers on food. We don't queue anymore because right now at 250 you will be able to drop your landmark. As you can see again, in this case I place it a little further towards the outside because there's still the straggler tree that I've chopped and I don't want to destroy that and waste time chopping another tree. I could have done that though, it would have been fine too um, if I really wanted to have the optimal base layout. I need to make sure that I have enough uh, food now for the next villager, which is why whilst those four are moving already, I wait until 2.55 for these five villagers, the five villagers from the beginning that have chopped the tree and also were on stone, um, to go onto the wood so that I can make another villager before I do that. Otherwise, I will stop villager production and I don't want to do that, of course. The next villager that comes out 
also still goes on food so that I have four on food at three minutes. And now I will start rallying onto wood. And these villagers here will be shift queued onto the wood line as well. So from here I'm obviously going towards the opponent's base and scouting. And the first villager coming out um, towards the wood line will build a house. And then once these villagers have cleared this tree, they will move onto the wood line and one of them will build the lumber camp that we now have exactly enough wood for. There we go. At this time our second spearman also comes out and can obviously also be used to uh, harass the opponent's base. From here we rally until we have nine villagers on wood. Um, but there's still a bunch of stuff to do in the meantime because we will need more stone now for our next military school. So right now we don't have enough food to actually sustain villager production if we wanted to go out with villagers to stone. So this is why we need to make sure that we wait until 420 exactly in order to gather enough food. As you can see, 50 food exactly, having forced a drop off here with all these four villagers. That allows us to queue another additional villager and build a mining camp with these four villagers. So we basically just ex exchange the four villagers on food from these four that were on the sheep to these four that are on the landmark and will go onto the berries in a second as we age up to feudal age. So we reach feudal age. Now the first thing we need to do at reaching feudal age, if we did it perfectly, it will work out that we have exactly enough time to switch to Sapahi training instead of Spearman training right before the third Spearman comes out. That's the first thing we do in Feudal Age. The next thing we do is we need to make sure that these villagers here actually move on to the berries instead of any other food source. Because obviously the good thing about the Twin Minaret Madrasa is that it actually boosts our food income by quite a significant margin, so we really want to make sure that there's four villagers on the berries at all times. The next villager coming out, we have four villagers on food, those are the landmark villagers, then we have nine villagers on wood, we have two villagers still on gold, and four villagers that will be on stone very soon. Our military school is producing Sipahi, and now the next villager coming out is rallied here, which is kind of weird because it's not a resource, but we need to build our blacksmith next. But before this villager comes out, we should have finished scouting the opponent's base, or at least the relevant resources, and make a decision. The blacksmith we can build at, at any point, like, or always, basically, so we can take a little longer to scout the opponent's base, which is nice. Um, because this blacksmith will be built no matter what. But once this blacksmith is halfway done, so let's say 450, we should really know what our plan is. Now, if we wanted to go to um, a feudal all-in playstyle, we would build a stable after this. Then we would build our second military school, then an archery range, move the villager that has built all of this to the gold, for three on gold, and then our stone villagers would gather another 100 stone and move to food at roughly 610. All the while we would get upgrades and make Sipahi plus archers and rally to food, then to wood, for a villager split of 13, 14 and 3 at 8 minutes. And that is a build order you will have seen around. But what if you wanted to build a second TC from here? Well, in that case, you would still build 
the blacksmith because uh, the additional blacksmith for two military schools is worth one villager in terms of additional production speed. And then you just start rallying onto stone. Um, and you wouldn't take all these villagers off of stone until you have enough to build your second DC. So this is going to rally onto stone. This villager here builds the blacksmith and then builds no production. Instead, either builds a house now or goes on to food for a very short brief second until they can build the uh, additional military school right now and then builds the house later um, and then goes to gold as you can see here optimally you would build this house before the black uh, before the military school then build the military school and then go to gold all the while we're rallying onto stone our wood villagers are still working on wood and we have also chosen to get wheelbarrow wheelbarrow is obviously very very good um, in every match all the time but especially if you want to go second TC because it increases the speed of your villagers so now we are up to nine villagers on stone and from that point we have enough at 650 645 we have enough stone to build our second TC we rally onto food because obviously now we will need more than four or five villagers on food and we also have enough wood now exactly to build our second TC now obviously in terms of placing your TC you kind of want to place it where you can you know if you can place it on food I'm going to place it here that's fine um, this would have also been a really good spot but only if I can defend it um, otherwise you can also just drop it you know somewhere on your gold or maybe you know here where there's also food there and, and your landmark if you can protect somewhere here you know it really it really doesn't well it does matter a lot but in this case I'm just showing an example where I'm actually moving quite a bit, which is why wheelbarrow is good. Um, and I'm moving my units, you know, just to demonstrate that I would be defending this spot then with my units, which is what Ottomans can do. And um, other suits have a harder time doing because they don't have as much free production, of course, or any free production. Um, and now I'm just rallying onto food here. Once this TC is built, um, I will be rallying this TC to wood and this to food. Um, obviously this depends on where I build my second TC. In some cases I might build the second TC on a wood line um, and in that case I would rally differently of course. Um, I also chose the Vizier point uh, of Anatolian Hills at 640-645 to make sure that I have enough food for um, the double TC and all the production that is going to come after. Uh, the moment I have enough production, oh, I have an, enough wood for production, I use one of the villagers from uh, the wood line to build two production buildings. Also, don't forget to refresh your lumber camps. Uh, it really makes the gathering much more efficient. <coughs> And from here, in this case, um, you know, going for full production in Feudal Age, you can obviously also choose to go into food and gold and just go castle from here. It all depends on the situation at hand. One thing you want to make sure in either case, though, is that at 10 minutes you have enough stone to build your third um, and, you know, if you go castle, eventually also fourth. Uh, military school. Also always remember to choose the unit production that you want uh, once you've built it because standard is always spearmen. And that means that um, at roughly 9.30 you should at, at the latest should think about moving three to five villagers from food to stone. I will be doing that down here eventually, but yeah, make sure that you do that early enough. Also, obviously, adding houses with wood villagers. 
Um, and from that point, you should be good to go and choose whatever strategy you want. Um, so, yeah, in this example, I'm going for unit production here, adding again on wood and food. And now I'm moving out um, to stone very soon. I should have already done that though, to make sure that I'm fast enough to, to add the next uh, military school. So yeah, this is how you add the second TC with having some solid production. You also obviously want to get all your upgrades. I started with um, the uh, armor upgrade and then went on to steel arrow for plus one ranged attack. And as you can see, lumber preservation and fertilization. Um, this is why we have three villagers on goal, right? To get all these upgrades in the meantime. All right, so that is how you add the second TC after your flexible opening. I hope you learned something. If you have any ideas on how to optimize this even further or any question, please leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, class dismissed.